and we are praising God for you, you and you. Thank you for tuning in with us this evening in our series in Revelation. And we've been here for quite some time. And uh, hey, we're drawing down to a, con con to a conclusion because this evening we are sharing from the 18th chapter of the book of Revelation, uh, the revelation of the apostle John. And uh, we're going to try to move right through with our lesson this evening. Uh, but let's uh, have a moment of prayer before we proceed. Uh, dear Father, we thank you for your blessings this day. Thank you for waking us up and allowing us to experience another day on this earth. Thank you, Father, for uh, the opportunity to just share your word with your people and with anyone that will listen, but in particular uh, with New Sardis, but in general uh, with the World Wide Web. Uh, this, this word is good for the whole earth, for the whole world. And we thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for the anointing of your spirit. We ask that it would be with us as we share just now. God, not only do we ask for the blessing of your anointing to uh, proclaim your word, uh, but we ask, Lord, that you bless those who stand in need of our prayers this evening. You know who they are, where they are, and uh, we ask that you would be merciful and gracious to all of those that need your help, those that are beyond the help of mankind. We pray that you would be with, with them right now. We ask now that you be with us again in this time of study. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. And thank God. All right. From the uh, book of Revelation, and I said we were in chapter 18 uh, this evening, and that's what we're going to try to uh, deal with. There's only 24 verses, 24 verses, and uh, we'll deal with them and try to complete this chapter before we move on. 24 verses. And uh, allow me to, tonight not to read the entire chapter before I get to the exposition, but uh, allow me to uh, just reference the verses as I move forward with the exposition, okay? All right, here we go. Uh, remember in chapter 17, uh, we witnessed the fall of the great worldwide religion, the religious aspect of Babylon, okay? And uh, Babylon, uh, the religious Babylon uh, uh, that would take place in the world in idolatry and cultism, all right? Uh, the religious Babylon, if you will, was destroyed in chapter 17. Well, in this chapter, we will uh, witness the fall of commercial uh, Babylon, the economic uh, aspect of Babylon. And then remember, Babylon represents the wicked world. That's what it represents. Babylon represents the wicked world. And in the days of the tribulation period, men will build uh, an econ will build economic empires economic empire. I mean, dollars will just be flowing, billions, trillions, uh, millions, uh, such as uh, we get a, a reference to what's going to come forward as far as the future is concerned, based on what's happening right now. Uh, uh, example, uh, with uh, uh, Biden's infrastructure plan, he's talking about trillions of of dollars. I mean, used to be millions, you know, uh, billions for a minute. But now we're into uh, the discussion of trillions of dollars. So you can imagine where this thing is going, all right? Used to be thousands, used to be millions. Now it's uh, 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 trillions, trillions of dollars. And so uh, the future economic empire 
uh, will be unequaled uh, during the tribulation period. There will be astounding wealth and aff inf affluence. And, and you can imagine uh, right now <laughs> uh, uh, where we're going based on what it used to be like in our world and what it's like right now. Uh, uh, the, you know, the conversation used to be about uh, thousands, uh, but now it's about me. Millionaires are made today like uh, it used to be with those who would have $1,000 in their pocket. Hey, that's all changed. The economics is growing, and it's growing like crazy. It will all come, however, to a violent end. Uh, in chapter 17, we saw religious Babylon. Uh, we saw that system fall. Now we're going to see uh, the city uh, itself, uh, 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 economic Babylon, of the world, will fall. God himself will judge their wickedness. We'll see God put forth a demonstration of his great power. And we uh, will see four groups uh, react to what the Lord uh, will be doing. Okay? Uh, verse 1 through 4, I think, gives us a uh, description, all right, of what's going, going to happen. Okay, let me see if I can uh, reference those verses and find them for us. Uh, I say one through four. No, let, one through eight actually uh, is the announcement of the fall of Babylon. One through eight verses. Verse one says, after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. This is the announcement of the fall that's coming. The announcement of the fall of Babylon. Okay? And uh, this comes from the heavenly communicator. Okay? Who's filled with light and, and glory. And then in verse 2 and 3 and it says, and he cried loudly, cried mighty, mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon, the great is fallen is fallen and is become the habitation notice what he said habitation of devils and of and the whole of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird from for all nations have drunk of the wine of the raft of her fornication all right now that's that's covering the whole world and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth uh, wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Notice her corruption. All right, and then uh, notice the, the the demonism that is described when it talks about every foul beast. Okay, the city will be filled with evil and demon infestation. You think it's bad now? Lord have mercy. Just wait a little while longer if God tarries. Okay? We're getting a glimpse right now. We're getting a glimpse of what's coming to pass uh, in the very, very near future. We're getting a glimpse of modern government. Okay? We're getting a glimpse of the immorality that we are experiencing in this world drunkenness, demonism, drunkenness. The entire world is smitten by her charm. They are made drunk by her uh, allurement. The world is held captive under her intoxicating spell. She offers them immorality and sin without fear of religious repression. But the all they just don't know. Okay? It's, this speaks of a time of unbridled wickedness and lustful abandonment. God will deal with them, however, okay? We notice, though, in verses 4 and 8 through 8, we see her condition. We see Babylon's condition. And, 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 and verse 4 says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not 
partakers of her sin, and that ye receive not of her plague. There's a call of God's people to separate, okay? God has always done that, okay? All the way back to the beginning. He called Abraham to come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Uh, that's what it says in Second Second Corinthians 6, 17. He says, come out from among them, be separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you under myself. Verse 5 says, for her sins have reached into heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Okay? Babylon's tower did not reach heaven, but her sins did. <laughs> God is patient and long-suffering, but he does have a limit. Judgment will always come. Notice verse 6 says, God is going to reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her, double according to her works. In the cup uh, which she have filled uh, to her double. He's going, they're going to get double payment. <laughs> double payment is required for her sins. All right. Look back at ancient Babylon's. Okay. And the atrocities, uh, atrocities that she uh, did to Jew to the Jews during her time, and uh, talk. Uh, uh, you look at Psalms 137, verse 7 and 8, and, and it gives you some description of what happened even back then. Okay, verse 9 says, "Happy shall she be that taketh the dash, taketh and dashes thy little ones against the stone." Exodus 21. Uh, uh, 25, Exodus 21, 25, 22 to 25 says, Notwithstanding, if she continue a day or two, he shall not be punished for her, uh, for his money. M men strive and hurt women with child, so that her fruit depart from her, and yet no mischief follow. He shall be surely punished according as the woman's husband, okay, will lay upon him, and he shall pay as the judges determine. And if any mischief fall, then thou shalt uh, give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, and foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, and strife for strife. God will require double punishment and it will be upon wicked Babylon. Verse 4, 7, verse 4, however, says, uh, verse 7 says, How much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall uh, see no sorrow. Listen, remember the verses in Galatians that says, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. Hey, that was true back then, it's true now, and it's going to be true in the days to come. Verse 8 talks about, uh, said, therefore shall her plagues come in one day. Listen to verse 8. Her plagues shall come in one day, death and mountain and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judges her. Judgment will fall and will fall swiftly. Her des desolations will come in a single day, you hear what I say? In a single day, God is powerful, and he will dispense judgment. Now, uh, the second uh, uh, portion of what I want to say about this chapter is the attitudes toward the fall of Babylon. Fall of Babylon. Uh, verse 11, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, 
for no man buy their merchandise anymore. <laughs> hey, listen, it'll be over for the malls. It'll be over for all the stores. Hundreds, thousands upon thousands of them will no longer be uh, selling their merchandise. Verse 12 says, the merchandise of, of gold and silver, precious stone and of pearl and fine linen and purple, silk, scarlet, and all thine wood and all manner of vessels of glory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and linen and marble, cinnamon, odors, uh, ointments, fragrances, or wine, oil, fine flour, wheat, beasts, sheep, horse, chariot, slaves, souls of men, and the fruits that uh, thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things uh, which were uh, dainty and godly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things which were uh, made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing and saying, Alas, alas, that great city uh, that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stone and pearl, all right, uh, is going to be destroyed. Now, I gave to you what uh, the apostle John uh, could uh, rationalize in his day in giving a description of what he saw. But listen, we can put that in contemporary terms, all the stuff that I've just mentioned in these verses. He's talking about all the jewelry, all the gold, all the fineries, the clothes, clothing uh, that the merchant sold, uh, all the riches of this world, all the cars, all the trucks and, and automobiles, all of the mansions, all of the houses, all of the buildings, all of the great factories and the uh, great hotel, all of the airports and all of the material things in this world is going to be destroyed in an hour's time. John saw it. John saw it was coming. You ought to be able to see that it is coming based on what's happening. Read this word and it will picture for you what's coming. Think about where we are now and what we're experiencing. Yes, all the finery, the purple, the scarlet, all of the fineries of this world is going to be destroyed by God in an hour's time. Notice the weeping and the wailing of, uh, of mankind. It says, and the kings of the earth, verse 9 and 10, who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her, shall bewail her and lament her for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, Babylon, remember, I told you, Babylon represents the world. It's a symbol of the world. And he says, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. One hour, brothers and sisters, this earth is going to be wiped out. The monarchs, the kings who have prospered because of Babylon, okay, is going to all be gone. Verse 11 through 16, once again, gives the description of all the material things that's in this world. Okay, the merchants are weeping for all the money and the business uh, they they're seeing are destroyed and going up in smoke. Gold, <laughs> oh my goodness, uh, and uh, the souls that's lost. Okay, now uh, remember Matthew chapter six verse twenty twenty one says. Uh, but lay not up for yourselves uh, treasures in heaven where uh, the uh, neither rust nor uh, moth can corrupt and the thieves uh, do break through 
and still. Uh, for where your treasure is, there is your heart also. People will be trapped by materialism. They are trapped by materialism. People get, I was just thinking today, that some people that as far as this earth and this world is concerned, oh, they're doing very well. They're doing very well. You know, uh, they're living, as John described, they're living deliciously. Okay, they got it going on in this world. But what is the status of their souls as relates to God? What is their status as relates to the eternality of their soul, of heaven? What is this? That is what you got to be concerned about because this world, this earth, is going to be destroyed in an hour's time. Okay, when it goes up in flame, according to verse. Uh, 14 is the third part of our lesson tonight. Uh, part of uh, 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 third, the third aspect of our lesson, it gives a picture of hell, ungratified desire, 17 through 19. For in one hour, listen, one hour, read it for yourself. It's in your Bible. For in one hour, so great riches is come to know. And every shipmaster, and all the company and ships and sailors, okay? That's like uh, the port here in uh, Cleveland downtown, uh, the Port Authority. Now that's, that's Port Authorities in every city, every state, every country. You know, all the trading that goes on uh, uh, because of the great seas uh, and the great oceans. All, the, all of that, the Bible says, as many as trade by sea stood or fall. And cried, verse 18, and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour is she made desolate. Okay? Uh, the uh, mariners, men will learn to, uh, to too late, they will learn too late that materialism uh, will lead to nothing. Mark 4, 8, Mark chapter 8, and verse 36 and 37. I say Mark chapter 8, verse 36 to 37 says, For what shall it profit a man? What shall it profit him if he shall gain? the whole world, and lose his soul. I just read it to you directly from the book of Revelation, okay? What's going to happen to this world? And he said, or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Verse 20 says, rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God have avenged you on her, the heavenly multitude, there will be rejoicing in heaven over the fall of a God-hating world, a God-hating Babylon. God has avenged the blood of the honor of his servants, all those that died and shed their blood because uh, they were servants of God and doing the will of God. And finally, finally, uh, the third third outline of our lesson this evening, verses 21 and through th to 21 through 24, we have the accomplishing uh, of the fall of Babylon. Accomplishing the fall of Babylon. Okay, yes, uh, the sea uh, uh, come up upon Babylon. She is covered with a multitude of the waves thereof, okay? Verse 21, and a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. Babylon and all that she stood for is no more. He wipes out the wickedness of this world. Verse 22, 
says, and the voice of harpers and musicians. Listen, this is all the musicians of our world today. Now, John is just given what he, he knew and what he could describe. And so he says, in the voice of the harpers and the musicians and the pipers and the trumpeteers shall be heard no more and all in thee and no craftsman and whatsoever craft he be. Hey, plumbers, <laughs> carpenters, electricians, <laughs> computer whiz, all of them shall be found any more, shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. No more factories. <laughs> no more making cars and trucks and trains and the like. Uh, music without God. No more. No more. Verse 22. The, and the voice of hoppers and musicians, pipers, trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman and whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of the millstone shall be heard no more at all, all industries, all craftsmen, uh, no more. All right. It says, in the candle, verse 23 says, and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for, all, for by thy sorcerers, all the nations deceived. In other words, there'll be no more marrying, as the scripture says, and no more marrying and giving in marriage. There'll be no such thing anymore. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For the merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorcerers were all nations deceived, okay? No more weddings, y'all. No more getting married. <laughs> no more in this world joy and happiness. That's of this world, okay? The, the kind of uh, 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 joy, uh, happiness that uh, is temporary, that doesn't last, okay? Uh, if it's not in the Lord, it's temporary. It's not of God. It's temporary. I, I said on yesterday how I thought when I was in the world that I was really enjoying life and uh, uh, experiencing what I thought was the best of life, only to find out all that I was enjoying, what I thought I was enjoying, was fictitious. It wasn't real. It was a figment of my imagination. Okay? All of that's going to be gone, y'all. And then verse 23 says, and in her was found uh, the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Babylon represents all, I said all, all the sins and the murder of all time. Judgment falls from the Lord to ultimately destroy all those who have opposed God. You're talking about murders every day. I mean murders on top of murders. Uh, death on top of death. All kinds of tragedy, atrocities that's going on in this world uh, uh, because they've thrown God out of their lives. They don't want no more a part of him, okay? And we see what's happening in America. I don't know what's going on in other countries around the world, but I'm a, I'm assuming based on the word of God, same thing is happening. Uh, 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 Cleveland is just a, a example of what's going on all over the world. Okay, it's happening, but all of it, according to seven verse eight chapter eighteen, is coming to an end. Is coming to a end, and you need to get right and get ready because those days are coming. God's word is true, and you will not be able to escape the judgment of God. We thank you for listening this evening. Sorry for the 
uh, out of uh, my element. <laughs> uh, this is not my niche. Uh, so, uh, but I hope it came through. Hope you heard the message of chapter 18. And uh, we love you. God bless you. Uh, if there's one here that d- doesn't know Jesus Christ in the part of the sin, if you will uh, call the church, get in touch with uh, someone at New Sardis, numbers 216-921-1912, there'll be someone who will answer your call in terms of uniting with the church or receiving Christ as personal Savior, okay? You can always go back, look at the uh, uh, document that's on the screen from every message, every message on Monday, uh, every message on Wednesday, and it'll tell you exactly what you need to do in order to uh, 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 unite with Christ, make peace with Christ, and get in line with heaven uh, before it's too late, okay? Or if you want to be a part of the Sardis Church family, you can do that too. Love to have you as, as a member of the congregation. All you have to do is call and make contact, okay? Love you. We out of here. Thank God for you. May God bless you real good. May you have a good evening and nothing happen. Uh, we'll be back on this station on Wednesday. God keep you in his loving care. Good night to all.